What is up YouTube and welcome to this Lovecraft Country video review, which sadly got delayed by just a day as life, you know, always does get in the way. But episode three is a great departure from last week when I was worried how they would actually top last week's superb episode and the ending of it because it really did feel like an entire season finale, which means it's a season finale for the whole of the season must be absolutely insane. But this story of the haunted house is the second story in the book itself with next week being a pretty Braithwaite heavy story if the book is anything to go by. Now, this episode opens with Letty in church with Hippolyta and everyone singing gospel songs and dancing as the audio from a 2017 Nike Be True campaign actually plays. The episode is also called Holy Ghost. It's unclear to me if this is a Sunday service or a memorial slash funeral for Uncle George. We have a card on the screen explaining that some black men moved into a house and 10 days later, three people actually went missing. This is, of course, the three white supremacists who got absolutely final destination at the end of the episode. Uh, somewhat of a comeuppance for the house's actual ghostly inhabitants. Letty turns out to have come home and come into some money from her mother and she actually lives up to the promise she made her sister, which was to buy a huge house in the Chicago suburbs. And in a trailer for the whole season, we see the second part of that actually come to fruition, where her sister will also actually work in a department store. This is a reference to the white flight and also the reverse white flight, where white people would actually leave an area when black people started to buy property in their neighborhood. Buying a big house in a white neighborhood is a huge statement there and something that Christina Braithwaite clearly knew when she manipulated the entire events of this to send money to Letty pretending that it was from her mother and also convincing the estate agent to actually tell her to buy this specific house and its connection to the Order of the Ancient Dawn. It has been three weeks since the last episode and also George's death. Asuka seems to have actually become the man of the house, but there seems to be a clear friction between George's wife and Atticus, as she clearly does not believe their cover story that the douchebag sheriff shot George, and Atticus has clearly outstayed his welcome here and decides to go and stay with his father, who is drunk again. A build-up to discussions that Atticus had with George about Atticus's father actually being a drunk and will no doubt be a recurring theme throughout the entire season. Letty seems to be getting every single guy in town to actually help her with a move, and Attica seems to have a lot of friction with her, as last week's crazy adventure wasn't that actually dissected and digested by them. Almost instantly, the racists come out and start to be just genuinely awful. They honk their car horns day and night, and Atticus decides to actually stay as things start to get very, very weird. We head into Haunted Hill territory, and to be honest, I'm very excited for Blind Manor, and let me know if you want some videos on the upcoming sequel to House on the Haunted Hill, which is The Haunting of Blind Manor. Now, Letty actually takes a nap, and ghosts of the people who actually were found in the house and ghosts of people who were experimented on start to appear. And they are the victims of a scientist named Epstein who previously owned the house. Letty hears noises, which is a secret room underneath the basement where the bodies of these people were actually found, as we found out later in the episode. So we've got kind of all sorts of craziness going on here. Atticus comes to help and Letty thinks that it's actually the white people who are messing with the boiler and kind of causing all sorts of chaos in the house. Now, of course, Tick mentions that this is actually the tactics of noise and extreme heat that he used in Korea, alluding to the mysterious time that he had there and the unmentioned trauma, which will no doubt come out later on. Now, we mentioned last week as the kids are doing a Ouija board in the basement, and just as the music goes very weird, the name of George appears upsetting his daughter. I truly think he will come back as the discussion of immortality, experimentation, and legacy hints towards him actually making a return, and we can see here that ghosts are well a thing. Well, it may be simply the ghosts messing with everyone in the house, 
but we also see Hippolyta ushered into a room with an orrery, a mechanical model of the solar system, but this one is very different to our solar system as there are too many planets on it and we also see a telescope as well. So I do think this is George actually communicating with her and he will actually return. Of course, the Book of Names, there's also the Book of the Dead as well. It was mentioned last week. Now, during the party, Letty is actually dancing with another man to clearly make Tick jealous, but another ghost appears, and while she gets what she wants, it is all very, very bittersweet as a burning cross appears in the front garden. A sign, a token sign there, of the Ku Klux Klan and it's a sign of escalation as well as the white people in the neighborhood have become very very scared that black people are prospering in their neighborhood highlighting the clear systemic racism of the time. Letty has enough of this and actually smashes up the cars that have had bricks kind of attached to the horn. The police in the wagon clearly know about the house and interrogate her asking if someone has got her to buy the house but well it turns out that the police were also involved with this and giving bodies over to Epstein. And they asked, did she find anyone in the house and in the basement? Again, they clearly know what happened in the house and the police are further trying to cover their tracks as I expect there's more crimes to be found by him because the police were actually providing the bodies for him and on their payroll. He said, now soon she starts to see the ghosts in every single photo that she's taken and there is a Voltron of all the ghosts telling her to get out. Letty is also accused of just being her usual self by her sister and called out for not sharing the money with her siblings. It becomes clear that her mother leaving her the money was just absolutely bizarre and a hint for the final reveal of the episode. Letty is told to do better and actually bored people who need help and not just artists and her own bohemian lifestyle. Letty finally looks into the house and discovers that the Winthrop house was owned by Epstein, a scientist who I mentioned was using it to conduct some unethical experiments and was fired from his tenure at his job and clearly went underground. She finds out that a corrupt cop was indeed sending bodies to Epstein and also finds that the missing people around the town were also ghosts in the property, the ones that they actually saw. So they hire a spiritual person to sacrifice a goat and use this as a barrier to actually get rid of the ghosts and the haunting. Now I like this because they're intersecting different types of magic. This sort of blood voodoo style kind of Creole mysticism as well as the sort of biblical Christianity style magic there that we saw in the first few episodes. I really do like that merging of ideas there. They start to exercise the demons as the, the leader there actually becomes possessed and the experiments appear, which are just pure nightmare fuel with a baby's head on a man. The white supremacists are actually killed as the ghosts are done and the house can be lived in once more. Now Letty is later asked about what happened to the white people off the record, but she says she, she doesn't know and I expect that she doesn't know that because she was very busy at the time when they were getting decapitated, but imagine they would have found the bodies. Now, Christina Braithwaite appears in the town. She was the one who actually told the realtor to sell Letty that specific house, and she also sent the money to Letty. Now, Winthrop was actually a member of the Ancient Dawn and was a big member to say the least because his name was on the painting that was in Braithwaite's sort of lab last episode. He was actually kicked out because he was starting to do some awful type of magic and to be kicked out of that I guess you had to be just a very very awful person. He actually stole the pages for the book of names and Christina says they need to find the Winthrop pages he stole and they can finally decide for what is known as the language of Adam. Now that is a big thing there and will be a big mystery moving forward as that was sort of the goal of the Order of the Ancient Dawn and she mentions that her father actually wanted to discover immortality. But we will have Atticus be led by Christina to try and actually discover their full power. Now of course there is someone called Caleb Braithwaite who will actually be the overarching villain of the season. She also looks like she freezes him and she says that you can study the book and all of this an entire lifetime and 
not even master just one spell or even master only one spell. She's seemingly been involved with three so far and wants to teach Atticus about his family legacy. I'm glad this part of the story is going to continue on in the background as next week it will come to the foreground because they will be finding the rest of the pages of the book and it will be more of sort of the first two episode story of magic and mysticism and monsters as they go to a museum and it will be the next story of the book itself which is Abdullah's book. But that's it for the video. Please drop a like down below and please do subscribe with notifications on if you enjoyed the video and let me know what content you want. And I'll see you soon. Goodbye.